Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Pope, and we want to thank you for being with us for another session of the Worship Hour. You know, God is so good that he continues to bless us day in and day out, and we are thankful for that. We just believe that God has a special blessing in store for us today, and I tell you, my brother, us includes you and us. So we just pray that you will sit back, that you would just enjoy but most of all, that you would lift up the name of Jesus as we praise his name. Come on, everybody. Let's go to church. It ain't no harm to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Amen. It takes a mind stayed on Jesus to be able to come out on a day like today. When you see the fleet and you know that there's rain out there and you say, but you know what? I got to go get into the presence of the Lord. Amen on today. Amen. So we want to give God the glory and the honor and the praise and just thank him for everything that he has done. Amen. on me my soul is broken and my eyes can't see can you hear me calling calling out your name oh son of david have mercy on me oh son of david have mercy on me the wolves are coming i can hardly breathe my heart is heavy i can't get no sleep oh son of david have mercy on me oh lord have mercy oh lord have mercy have mercy on me have mercy on me oh lord have mercy oh lord have mercy have mercy on me have mercy on me oh son of david have mercy on me that crowd keeps yelling trying to silence me oh but i won't stop praying got to believe oh son of david have mercy on me oh lord have mercy oh lord have mercy have mercy on me have mercy on me oh lord have mercy oh lord have mercy have mercy on me have mercy on me well i'm broken without your peace god i need you to rescue me come on jesus come on and set me free oh cause i'm blinded and i can't see and i'm broken without your peace cause i need you to come and set me free yeah 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 have mercy oh lord have mercy have mercy on me have mercy on me oh lord Have mercy on me, oh Lord, have mercy, oh Lord, have mercy, have mercy on me.
Go to the Gospel of Luke and go to chapter 17. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. Amen. Praise God. Luke chapter 17, and let's go to verse 11. Amen. Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 17, you go to verse 11. Amen. Praise God. And when you have it, would you signify by saying amen? If you need me to hold on, say, wait a minute, preacher. Amen. I heard a wait a minute. Amen. I'll be reading to you from the New King James Version. And it says, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice and with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said, Arise, go your way. Your faith had made you well. Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I'd like to talk with you this morning from the topic, the power of thanksgiving. The power of thanksgiving. Let us have a word of prayer. Father God, we just come now in the name of your son Jesus and we come to give you the glory, we come to give you the honor, and we come to give you the praise. Holy Spirit, unless you speak, I can't preach. Unless you speak, Lord, we'll be in the same predicament that we were before we came in. Unless you speak. Dear Heavenly Father, we would leave with the same hunger and thirst for righteousness that we had when we came in. So I ask you to speak now, Lord. Speak as only you can. And God, as you speak, we'll be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, when we think about Thanksgiving... I can already see what everybody's thinking about. Some, some <laughs> somebody behind me is thinking about collard greens. Somebody over there is thinking about chocolate cake and some pork barbecue. Somebody over here is thinking about some turkey and some chicken and some dressing. And somebody's somebody's just thinking food. That's all I want is food. It doesn't matter. Just, just as long as it's food. They're just, they're just thinking about that good food. And, and you know, when you, when, when you think about this particular holiday, you know, we get uh, tied up because uh, Sister Annette has all her family that's here today, and, and I don't know how they're going to act over the week, right? I'm just praying that they all be good. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Everybody's going to be good. And they get around the table and when we get around the table with the family, we have that family meal, we just enjoy ourselves. We enjoy ourselves. Some of the brothers, most of the brothers, and some of the sisters are going to sit down and say, okay, the game is on. Okay, everybody, now everybody be quiet. We got to, we got, we got to cheer for our favorite team, the Dallas Cowboys. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're just going to shout. We're just going to shout. Oh, Sister Beauty, it's all right. You can smile on that, boy. She, boy, that face just went south real quick, boy. Woo. 
First lady said the devil don't get a vote. <laughs> we think about it we think about this day and we have so many good thoughts about the revelry and everything that's going to go on in to the day but I think that as we think about Thanksgiving in that from that perspective that we lose the opportunity to thank God for the blessings that he bestows upon us on a daily basis See, saints, we ought to always be thankful. We don't have to just wait on Thanksgiving. We ought to always be thankful because it's the right thing to do. We ought to always be prayerful because as we saw yesterday as we were delivering uh, the different food boxes, everybody is not in the same position. Everybody is not as blessed as we are. There's some people who are just searching and trying to find food. There are some people who are searching and trying to find shelter. They're trying to find ways to stay warm this Thanksgiving season. And we should never, ever take our blessings for granted. We can ne never neglect to say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for being so good to me. But sometimes we neglect just to say, thank you, Lord. We get so used to living in our own world, and in our own world, there is a comfort zone that has been built around us, and because we're in that comfort zone, sometimes we just get kind of too comfortable. But when I look in Luke chapter 17, and you see verses 11 through 19, what I see is there's a, there's a powerful example of how differently people respond to the grace of God. How differently they respond to the mercy of God. We got different perspectives about God's blessings. And those different perspectives about God's blessing can prompt us to either give God thanksgiving or prompt us to just stay in our little comfort zone and I'll tell you that if we want to just stay in our comfort zone we have the potential to miss a greater blessing that God has in store for us if we follow the story we can see that the power of thanksgiving took two ten men from disease to deliverance took 10 men from disease to deliverance. And the disease in the story deals with those 10 men that were suffering from leprosy. That physical disease, that physical disease of leprosy brought on humiliation. See, leprosy is a vile, vile disease. And in some cases, that disease can cause people's uh, flesh to rot and in severe cases it causes limbs to fall off and as it continues to progress it can eventually end up in death the leper the leper because of all the the, the rotting flesh that they have on their bodies can can walk and as as they walk there's an there's an odor there's a smell that comes from the open wound and when a leper in the times of Jesus was around people, when he came around people, he had to cry out, unclean, unclean, to let everybody know that a leper is in the area. And even with the warning, some people would get so stirred up because the leper was close that they would pick up rocks and they would throw at the leper so that they would not come near them. The leper was a physical outcast. They were social and religious outcasts as well. Nobody wanted anything to do with the leper. No family, as they, as the Levisios are here today, no family was able to come around them. No friends, no church, nothing there. They were doomed. They were doomed to live a life of loneliness. They had hopelessness in front of them. There was that personal humiliation. 
But if we really stop to think about it, the story of the lepers shows us how great human need is and 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 the hopelessness that some people experience in life yeah we have some people who may not have the disease of leprosy but yet they are alone especially at this time of year they are alone and they don't feel a sense of hope they don't feel that sense of joy everybody wants to cast them aside everybody wants to cast them out but what's interesting is that when we get to the story of the lepers, there's an unlikely group that has formed a bond. We have some Jews and Samaritans that have gotten together. And if you know anything about the Jews and the Samaritans, they don't like each other. They don't like each other, but yet, let me tell you something. Misery loves company. And when you're in the midst of a miserable situation and you see somebody else in the midst of the miserable situation, boy, you can form a bond together. You don't care about what you don't like about them. All you know is that both of y'all are in the midst of a miserable situation and you're going to hang together because you can help one another. Yeah, so here we have these 10 lepers and they're dealing with with personal humiliation because of their disease. But their disease also leads them to cry out with a desperate plea. They cry out because these 10 men recognize that Jesus the Christ was in the area. And even though they could not come near the Lord, it didn't stop them from calling on his name. They knew that the doctors couldn't do anything. The doctors couldn't heal them, but they heard about this man, Jesus, who fed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. They heard about this man, Jesus, who healed a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. They, they, they heard and they said, since the doctors can't do anything, maybe Jesus can do something. Yeah, Jesus is over there. So they said, now it's 10 of us. It's 10 of us. We can't go over there because they'll throw rocks at us. But from over here, we can cry out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When they called on Jesus, the one who saves, they called on him as the master. And that word master refers to the one who has power to meet needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These, 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 these lepers, they said Jesus has the power. He has, he has the power to meet our needs. Jesus has the power to do what other men couldn't do. He can heal us of this disease. Jesus, master. Have mercy on us. They cried and they cried. And yes, they recognized Jesus had power. But I dare say that these men failed to realize the depth of his authority. See, Jesus was more than a healer. Our Lord Jesus is not only a healer, but he is also God. And I think sometimes that we turn to Jesus in our hour of need and say, Jesus, if you just save me from, Jesus, if you just deliver me from, Jesus, if you just heal me from, everything is going to be all right, Lord. But you're only calling on Jesus as your healer. We're not calling on him as God. Because if we called on him as God, we would honor the Lord as God. If we called on him as the Lord, we would honor him the way that he should be honored. Behind the plea would come a word of praise. But too often we have the plea and no praise. That was a disease that the leprosy, that the lepers dealt with. And their disease preceded a powerful miracle. See, because when they called on Jesus, the Lord heard their plea. 
But what the Lord did is the Lord did something that was a little bit unexpectedly. He did not heal the lepers right away. But the Lord looked up and the Lord sent them away and commanded them to go show themselves to the priest. The Lord didn't reach out like he did when, 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 the, when the one leper came to him. He didn't reach out and touch him and they, they were healed. But the Lord looked up and said, go show yourself. To the priest. I'm not going to touch you right now. Just, just go show yourself. To the priest. See when the. When the, he said show yourself to the priest. The Lord was confirming the word. When he said he did not come to change. One jot or one tittle. Of the law. Because the priests were the only one who could proclaim. That a person was free of leprosy. So he said go show yourself. To the priest. And I know the lepers had to be thinking, now hold on a minute. Is that what he's going to do? I know I already got leprosy. When I turn around and I walk away and I'm going to the priest, I'm still going to have leprosy. What he's telling me doesn't make any sense because when I get there and as soon as the priest sees my disease, the priest is going to turn me around and probably he won't throw rocks at me. But if you think about that, those words where Jesus said, go, that was a command. Show yourself, that was a command. And when we're given a command, what God expects is for us to obey the commands that he gives us. See, sometimes we don't understand what God is telling us to do when we're in the midst of our situation. I know we don't always understand what God is telling us to do because if you think about it, when God told the Israelites to march around the walls of Jericho seven times, he said march around the wall and, and the first day don't say anything. And then the next day don't, 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 don't say anything. Just get up and march around the wall. And then on the seventh day, after you, as you're marching around the wall, when the trumpet sounds, then y'all begin to shout and the wall is going to come down. How in the world are the walls of Jericho going to come down if I'm just standing there shouting? Don't you know how big and thick those walls are? I'm standing up there. You telling me to walk and shout? That doesn't make any sense to me. But when we walk in faith, and we don't walk by sight. And we do what God says. No matter whether you understand what God is saying or not. If you do what God says when we're obedient to the word of God. Then God will make your Jericho walls fall flat. See somebody, somebody in here has been talking to the Lord. And you don't understand why God is telling you to be still and to be quiet. You don't understand why God is telling you to keep your hands to yourself. You don't understand why God is telling you, trust me. I will repay, saith the Lord. You say, no, God, I need you to read them, get them right now. God said, no, I need you to sit down and shut up so I can do my work right now. You may not understand what's going on. But I want to encourage, if you don't understand what's going on, just keep knocking on the door of heaven. Hallelujah. Just keep on seeking the Lord in heaven. Hallelujah. Just keep on asking God for what it is you need. Hallelujah. God will show you. God will show you in his time what it is that he wants you to do. But while he's showing you what he wants you to do, God said, be obedient. Do what I tell you to do. Don't worry about what everybody else is whispering in your ear. Don't worry about that lying counsel that you're getting in your ear. Listen to me and I will bless you. Thus saith the Lord. See, I want to tell you something. We can count on God's help to help us in our time of hurt and our pain. We can count on God to honor our fasting and our prayer. But we got to know that it's the will of God. It's God's way and not our way. He told the lepers, he said, go, show yourself to the priest. These lepers had enough sense to pray or to do exactly what God said. 
because when these lepers started walking away, let me tell you something, they didn't go by themselves. Jesus is over here, and he said, go that way and show yourself to the priest. And I want you to hold on. Because they turned around and started walking. But they wasn't walking by themselves. They up here. Right back here. Grace and mercy say I'm overtaking you. Grace and mercy say I'm right behind you. Grace and mercy said, I'm, look, look, grace and mercy said, I'm getting ready to release healing into your body. Grace and mercy said, I'm getting ready to bring you some deliverance. I'm, I'm getting ready to bring you the help that you need. Grace and mercy said, I'm right behind you. Don't worry. You just keep on walking. And as they were walking to the priest, hallelujah, skin began to, to reform on their bodies. As they were walking, they started to feel a little bit better because their blood started to get cleansed. As they were walking a little bit better, they go, I can't smell you, brother. And they kept on walking because they're getting healed down on the inside. And they kept on walking because Jesus had said, go. Go. Show yourself to the priest. And as he began, as they went, healing took place because grace and mercy followed behind them. I want to tell somebody in here, do what the Lord says and Grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I need need grace and mercy. mercy. I need need grace and mercy. mercy. Yeah, if you need grace and mercy, then be obedient to what thus saith the Lord. But you know how sometimes you get so happy down on the inside. Nine of the lepers said, we got to get on to the priest. But one of the lepers said, the priest didn't heal me. (laughs) Say it was Jesus that healed me. So before he got there, he had to turn right around. And he had to run back to Jesus. He had to fall down and begin to worship the Lord. He cried out to God and said, praise your name, God. Praise your name, God. Praise your name, God. Hallelujah. One thing I didn't tell you in the beginning. See, there was a difference in the man. Because when he cried out with the ten in the beginning, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. One of the problems or one of the effects of leprosy is that hoarseness comes. So as they cried out, they had to stray, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, because of the hoarseness in their voice. But when he came back, (laughs) Jesus, glory to God, glory to God, he was able to give God praise. He was able to engage in personal worship. He was able to magnify the Lord with a full voice. And when he had a full voice, he didn't have any shame in his game. Old brother Clarence said, Jesus died for me so I can walk in the rain. I ain't got no shame in my game. I'm going to come on in to the house of the Lord. After all that Jesus has done for me, a little rain ain't going to stop me. After all that the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. I wonder how many times we've cried out in Bible study. Wonder how many times we've cried out in prayer meeting. Wonder how many times we've cried out as we made the phone call to either the pastor or the ministers or one of your prayer partners. You cried out and say, Lord, I need you in this situation. How many times have you cried out? But when God answered your call, how many of us did like this one man who used to be, who used to be a leper and went back and said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for for blessing me. Or did you just get in your own little bubble and and say, I'm all right now and and I can go on with life. I, I don't have to worry about being ostracized by anybody. I don't have to worry about my situation anymore. How many of us? 
have fallen into the category of the nine. How many of us want to cry out to the Lord with zeal? Sister Nietzsche was singing that song, Hallelujah, and she wasn't happy with just one octave. She had to take it up another octave. Hallelujah. She said, I got to get just a little bit higher in my praise. Come on, choir, and go just a little bit higher with me. Rashad said, don't worry, Nitra. I got your back. I'm going to take an octave up on the piano. I thought, Nitra, you were going to go one more time. It's pretty a good thing that you didn't go one more time. I might have been anointing myself right here on the floor of the pulpit if you'd have gone one more time and give God the praise that the Lord deserves. Psalm 35 and 28 says, my tongue will speak of your righteousness and of your praises all day long. Hallelujah. When I do the benediction, I wonder how many people are going to praise God after you leave the house of God today. How many of you going to praise God as you're driving down the road? How many of you going to praise God when you get to your houses? How many of you going to praise God when you own your job? How many of you going to praise God all the day long? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to tell somebody something. This healing thing. This healing thing that Jesus performed. When Jesus saw the one come back, where's the nine? Where, 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 where's, the, where, where's the other nine? Weren't there ten voices that cried out to me for mercy? Where's the other nine? Let me ask another question. It's not stated in the word, but I want to ask the question anyway. The nine that came back were probably all Jews. Where's my chosen people? Because the one that came back was the one that the Jews hated. That was a Samaritan. The one that came back wasn't part of my chosen, wasn't part of my chosen people. Where's my chosen people at? Where are the ones that, that I called out, the called out, where they at? Where is the church? Why won't the church praise me? Why won't the church give a testimony about how good I've been? Why won't the church lift up my name wherever they may be? Why won't the church glorify me where they at? Bible said lets us know. That if we are going to return, if we begin to think about how good God has been to us, we ought to be hollering, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Can you think about something that God has already done for you? Can you think about how good God has been to you? Can you think about something that God has brought you through? When you think about that thing or those things, how have you responded to the goodness of the Lord? Hallelujah. The Lord says if we give him thanks, there's yet a greater blessing that is in store for us. See, the power of Thanksgiving has nothing to do with the holiday. That's just a play on words. The power of Thanksgiving has everything to do with the spiritual blessings that God wants to bestow upon each and every one of us. See, the ten lepers came to Jesus for spiritual healing, physical healing. They came to him for physical healing. And as nine walked away, they were thankful for the physical healing. They were, they were doing so good, but the, but the one had to run back to Jesus because he was so happy. And when he went back, he got a greater blessing because the Lord told him that because he had given him praise, he said, your, 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 your praise has now made you whole. Hallelujah. Your faith has made you whole. Whole. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. 
I was watching a preacher on television this morning. And he was praying over this young lady. And he was telling her that there's some problem on the right, the right side of your head. And he said, what I need you to do is all I want you to do is I want you to relax right now. God said, just relax right now. And as you relax right now, he's going to take away some of all of this pain and, and everything on the right side of your head. And he said, what's the problem that you feel that you've been dealing with the most. She said, I'm so tired all the time. I'm just tired all the time. God says, well, if you will relax when I stop praying, what I want you to do is I want you to get up from your seat. And I, you see that exit sign over there? I want you to run to that exit sign just like you did when you were 16. I want you to get up out of your seat. And when this young woman got up, she wasn't a little small woman. She wasn't one that went to the petite area to go buy her clothes. But this woman got up, and she got up, and she said, I'm going to be obedient. She got up anyway, and she started making her way through the crowd. And as she made her way through the crowd, when she got to the aisle, she began to run as fast as she could run. She ran not only to this exit sign over here. She turned around and ran over to that exit sign over there and then she turned around and ran back to her seat and when she got back to her seat she said Whoo! I'm tired but I feel good hallelujah she was obedient and because she was obedient she got more than just a physical blessing she got a spiritual blessing I want to tell somebody as Thanksgiving has come up I want you to begin to think about what the Lord has already done for you. Walk around heaven. Somebody, it's time to walk around heaven. I want you to begin to think about what Jesus Christ did for you. When God in his grace and mercy sent his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus, to come and walk the earth for 30 and 3 years. When God in his grace and mercy sent his only begotten son to go to the cross at Calvary, to let him put nails in his hands, to let him put nails in his feet, to let him put a crown of thorns in his head. When Jesus was on the cross, he could have come down. He could have called 12 legions of angels. Right, but instead, right. the Lord said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He said, it is finished. I'm giving up the ghost. I'm giving up my life. I'm going to do it because I love you. Because I love you. Because I love you. When you were at your worst, I came to give you my best. I want you to know that I love you. Walk around heaven all day. When you're walking around heaven, I want you to remember that when they took him off the cross, they put him in a tomb. Somebody said it was a borrowed tomb. It was borrowed because he was going to need it three days. He wasn't going to stay there all day on Sunday. No, he stayed there all night Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. He stayed there all night Friday night. But somebody said, early, early. On Sunday morning, he got up. your blessings when he got up out the grave and the Lord called him home he called him as the first fruit he let him know about the rest of the souls that are going to come to him you're one of those souls if you believe in Jesus you're one of those souls if you believe in Jesus whoever's got Jesus you're one of those souls walk around heaven and look at your blessing I thank God that he has redeemed us I thank God that he has paid the price thank God that he's been good to you and to me walk around heaven and look at your blessing you know how it is the weight of this world sometimes gets you down but no matter how much weight the world tries to put on you you got a great high priest his name is Jesus I said his name is Jesus the son of the living God. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. Walk around heaven and start counting up your blessings. Your God has been real good to you because Jesus can identify with all of your hurts. He can identify with all of your pains. So he is a high priest who knows about your sorrow. Start counting up your 
you got your hand in the master's hand, the Bible says that there's nothing. Somebody say nothing. Nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Come here, minister. Come on quickly. When God latches on to you, trouble might come your way, but trouble can't separate you.
Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for everything that he's done today. And my brothers and my sisters, let us be intentional about giving God praise. Let us be intentional about thanking him for all that he has done for us. Our God is a good God, and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. And so we are thankful for each and every one of you. As you go into this Thanksgiving week, amen, just please remember, lift up your eyes toward heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Can't do any more than that. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just come to you now in the name of your son, Jesus, and we give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. And we just want to say thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. We pray to Heavenly Father that you would just continue to watch over us and keep us, that you would bless us as only you can. Lord, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. To Heavenly Father, more than you will ever know. So we just ask to Heavenly Father that you would go with us and that you would keep us to Heavenly Father in the hollow of your hand. We pray, Lord, that the grace of Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit would rest, rule, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. And all God's children shouted, Amen. 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 And Amen. All right. So, um, our God is an awesome God, and He is worthy to be praised. You know, God answers prayers. We pray that God will be with us in the midst of the service. We pray that God will minister to us as we go through this time of worship and praise. And you know what? God never fails to answer. Today is no different. Our God showed up and he blessed us in a mighty way. The Lord wants his people to draw nigh unto him and he will draw nigh unto you. So as God wants us to come together, we want to take the time to invite you to join us here at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. 721 West 19th Street. You can join us for our Wednesday evening Bible study at 6.15 p.m., our Sunday morning Sunday school at 9 a.m., or our 10 a.m. worship hour. We would love to have the opportunity to love on you. Until we meet again, my brothers and my sisters, God bless you, God bless you, and God keep you. That is our prayer. Have a blessed day.